Hey everyone, how's it going? Jyotinder here and I do lead code questions on my channel. So if you're into that stuff, be sure to check out the channel and subscribe to it for more content. Right, so today we're looking at this question that is called rotate list and it's a pretty easy question. It says that you're given a linked list and you have to rotate this linked list to the right by k places where k is non-negative. So you're given a linked list, you have to rotate it to the right k number of times and k is given to be a non-negative integer. So all that really means is that you're given a list here, for instance, you say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you rotate it to the right by k number of times. So what, what happens here is, when the first time you rotate this list, you have the last element. When you rotate it, it gets added to the front. So you end up with something like 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. When you rotate it a second time, the last element in that current list gets removed from the end and gets added to the front. So this time, the list becomes 4, 5, 1, 2, 3 which is basically the basically your result, right? So yeah, that's what all you have to do. And the only tricky part about this question is that k can actually be larger than the list size itself. So yeah, you could have a list that is of the size, let's say you can have a three element long list and you can be told to uh, rotate it, let's say a million times, right? So that can actually factor into the time complexity and may give you a TLE. So we'll have to battle that out. And it's pretty easy to do that. If you look at the second example, that'll help explain that concept to you. So what happens here is the list that you're given here is of size three and K is greater than the size of the list. It's four and four is greater than three. So you see that when you rotate a list K number of times and K is greater than the size of the list, the effective number of rotations is just the remainder when you divide that K by the size of the list, which is basically K mod the size of the list. Why is that? Because for example, if you look at this example, the size of the list is three and K is four. We know that if we have a size of list N and we rotate it N times, we end up with the original list. Uh, and you can see that here in the example, they've explained it pretty clearly. So if you have the size of the list as three, after three rotations, you end up with the original list, which is zero, one, two, which is the, which you can see is the original list, right? So the actual effective number of rotations is basically k mod the size of the list. So four mod three would be one. So effectively, you're just rotating this list once, right? To the once to the right. So if you rotate this list once to the right, which is simply removing two from the end and adding it to the front, you end up with two zero one. And that is actually the result, right? So this is one optimization that we can do. Next, rather than rotating it by one element each time, what you can actually do is you can notice this, that the number of elements f that get added to the front of the list from the end is basically equal to the uh, to the integer k itself. So if k is equal to two, you see that the last k digits, which is the last two digits in this case, get removed from the end of the list and get added to the front, right? So we, d we already know that the number of elements that are going to be added to the front of the list is equal to k, right? So we can directly splice that sublist, that sublist consisting of two elements out of the end of the list and add it to the front. So that's what we are going to do. And you also realize that the new tail is the n minus kth element from the front. So if k is equal to two, n here is five, the third element, which is the n minus k, which is five minus two equal to three, the n minus kth element is the new tail. So that is something to think about. So we see that the third element this time now becomes the tail in the result. So how will we implement this entire thing? I know it can seem a little bit confusing uh, in all this talk, but it's a, it's, it's a pretty easy implementation. So let's see what we'll do. So the first thing that we'll be doing is simply checking a base condition that if uh, head is null, we'll simply return back the head itself so that we return a null pointer in case the head is null itself. Now we'll define a tail pointer which we'll use to traverse till the end of the list. So I'll just say auto tail equal to head. We'll initialize that as the first element of the list. We also need the size of the list, right? So we'll define a variable n and we'll initialize that with one because we already know that there's at least one element in the list because if there wasn't, we would have simply returned back the head, right? So we initialize that with, with one because you'll see why, you'll see why we initialize that with one. So now while the next element of the tail exists, we'll just say while tail next, what we'll do is we'll keep traversing the tail to the next element, right? We'll keep iterating uh, and we'll keep updating the tail to become the next element in line, right? So that we end up at the last element of the list. 
And while we're doing while we're doing that, we'll also increment n because n is the size of the list. So we keep track of n as well, and we say that tail equal to tail next, right? So by the end of this loop, n will have the size of the list, and tail will be the last element in that list, right? Now we just do k equal to k mod n. This just means that you're you're just finding the remainder that you get when you divide k by n. So if if k ends up being equal to zero, if k equal to equal to zero, that means k was a multiple of n, and that simply means that you are simply uh, rotating that list n number of times, uh, n number n number of times, or let's say two n number of times, or three n number of times, something like that. So it will just mean that the list in the end ends up at the same in the same order that it is currently in. So if k ends up being zero, we'll simply return back the head again because uh, if you rotate a list n times, it just ends up being the original list, right? Now, once you've done that, what you need to do is we need to define a new tail pointer which will traverse till the end of the list or an end of the new list, right? So, for instance, in this example, the new tail would be the element three. So we need a uh, pointer to traverse till that point, right? So we'll call it new tail. I'll say auto new tail equal to tail. So we'll just start off at the tail pointer. Now, we need to connect end of this list to the front, right? Because we know that if we are to cut these last two elements, we need to connect them to the front. So we do that here in the code. So we'll just write tail next equal to head. So we just connect the end of the list to the front, right? Now, we need to move the new tail to its actual position, the new act, the actual position of the new tail, which is n minus k from the start. So the number of steps for this, uh, the number of steps that we have to move this tail forward is simply, uh, we just call that n steps to new tail equal to n minus k, right? So while steps to new tail minus minus, while that is true, we'll simply move the new tail equal to new tail next. We'll just keep iterating over to the next element. And when this while loop ends, we'll see that the new tail ends up at its actual position, which will be the n minus kth element from the start, right? So you'll end up at element number three if you're looking at the first example, right? So you'll end up at element three and we'll have the new tail at its actual position. Now, what you need to do is create the new head of the list because we know that we need the new head of the list as well. So which will which will be returning back from this calling function. So the new head of the list will simply be the very next element of the new tail. So the new tail is element three. Hence the new head will be the next element, which is element four. And that is the case as we see in the result here. So we'll also define a new point we'll say that auto uh, new head equal to new tail next. So this just makes a new pointer, which is called new head, and just assigns that to the next element of uh, the new tail, right? So for example, if the new tail was three, uh, the new head becomes four. And just to terminate this list, we'll uh, make the next pointer of the new tail uh, equal to null because we need to terminate the list. So we'll just say new tail next equal to a null pointer. Right, so once we've done that, we can simply return back this new head. We can say return new head. And if we run that, it should give us the correct answer. And it does, so let's submit that. And we get a nice runtime, right? So we get 16 milliseconds, that is all right. And yeah, so this is how you solve this question. So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Code as always is in the description. Check out my channel for more videos and I will see you in the next one.